HCTV now begins its programming day. Starring John Candy, Joe Flaherty, Eugene Levy, Andrea Martin, Catherine O'Hara, Harold Ramis, and Dave Thomas. Television like you've never seen before. Oh, no, that's the third one today. Hey, mm. new on the job. Maybe it's the bag you're using. Bill's right. Hi, I'm Mutant Man for new nuclear-sized bangles. Like Bill, many of you work in nuclear power plants. And now, thanks to new nuclear-sized baggies, you won't have to worry about tracking home dangerous fission poisons like uranium-237 or neptunium-239, which could remain radioactive for up to thousands of years. And there's nothing funny about radiation burns or growth defects. Boy, these new nuclear baggies are great. <laughs> size baggies, because two heads really aren't better than one. Turkey in the straw, turkey in the hay, turkey in the straw. Howdy, farmers. I call you farmers, because who the hell else would be up at 6 a.m.? <laughs> well, let's take a look at those old commodity prices from the Board of Trade in Chicago. Pork bellies have opened lower today, pork shoulders are up a bit, pork lips are steady, pork elbows are unavailable, and pork eyebrows are rising sharply. Pickup trucks opened lower this morning at $150 a pound. Bib overalls also down a tad, $4 a pair. Straw farmer hats top the market at $12 a dozen. Corn cob pipes steady at $50 a hundred. Red caps with ear flaps down are sharply up $2.25 and a quarter. Domestic marijuana remains very poor. You just can't give that stuff away. And milk and magnesia caused a real run on the market yesterday. <laughs> Okay, now, I'd like to introduce a very special guest. Uh, he's from the Department of Agriculture, and his name is Mr. Hayes. Howdy, Mr. Hayes. Howdy, Big Jim. Now, I hear you're conducting a special investigation. Perhaps you'd like to tell the folks about it. Okay, yeah, I would. Uh, we've uncovered a situation, a serious situation, Big Jim, of uh, unscrupulous traveling salesmen turning up at farmhouses, uh, in many cases uh, claiming that they've run out of gas. Unsuspecting farmers have been taking these uh, salesmen in, and... And in some cases, the farmers have been insisting that these salesmen sleep with their daughters. Well, what can the average farmer do about something like that? Well, don't just take their word that they're not going to spend the night with your daughter. Make them put it down on paper and sign it. That's a dad blame good idea. It sure is, Big Jim. You get them to sign it and you get them to put it in writing and prove with identification who they are. Well, I think it's all right to let the occasional traveling salesman sleep with your daughter. <laughs> yep. Good for the daughter and good for the salesman, too. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Dwight. Thank you very much. Pleasure being on your show. Well, tomorrow I'm going to tell you all how to get money for not growing corns on your feet. So be sure to stay tuned. Until then, this is Big Jim McBob saying, hold out for all you can get. <laughs> Put your daughter out there in the lobby. Hello, Moscow. This is the office of the President of the United States. Are your refrigerators running? They are? Well, you better get out there and catch them. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys, guys, guess what I am, okay? What? what? I don't know, what is it? The presidential seal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. Okay, settle down, settle down. Come on now, we've got important business. Oh, I'm gonna say something before the meeting starts. I know you're all gonna be disappointed. But I'm not going to be telling any jokes today. I know I was coming here to tell some jokes and break you guys up. I'm always breaking you up with slashing one-liners, but there's no time today. We have too much work. So, General, let's start uh, with your report. The entire government's waiting with bated breath on your report on the Strategic Arms Limitation Treaty. Can we have that now, please? Uh, well, sir, I was, uh, I was, uh, uh, last night, I, the report, I was sick. Yeah, that's it. Sick. <laughs> Where's your note? Uh, right here. It's, uh, in well, similar really handwriting terrific. to my own. That's, uh, that's just great. Report on the Strategic Stop Arms Limitation Treaty. Hey, Bill, cut it out. Well, at least I'm sure, Mr. Secretary of State, that you have your white paper ready on the Mideast crisis. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, Mr. President, I, I didn't even know we were going to have a meeting today. <laughs> Will you stop bugging me? What? what is he doing? He's trying to plant a microphone on me. Man, he really is bugging you. Yeah. Well, that's his job. He's in the CIA. Leave him alone. I got my report ready. Well, that's sensational. At least somebody around here is doing some work. Hey, I can't read this. It's in code. I think I can, Mr. President. What does it say? It says... Just get out of here. That's ridiculous. Mr. President, I have a suggestion. I suggest we move on to the next order of business. Wait a minute. Just wait a minute here. Where does it say Secretary of State takes over meeting? I don't see it on the cards. <laughs> Mr. President, I have a serious suggestion. Well, it's about time somebody with some brains stood up and said something intelligent. <laughs> Speaking as Attorney General, Mr. President, I suggest we go over to the Senate office building and see if we can find some chips. All right! Let's go. Let's get out of here. Let's get serious. Now we're going to be officials. We're not clowns. Now, the second order on the agenda. I'm going to introduce you gentlemen to my new appointee to the cabinet. And I will do that right now. Right. Hello? Would you send in the new Secretary of Consumer Affairs, please? Hello? Hello? Uh-oh. I pressed the wrong button. I think I just launched some nuclear missiles. <laughs> oh, there we go. Would you send in the new Secretary of Consumer Affairs, please? Hey! Oh, hello! Hey, baby! Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Consumer Affairs, Miss Nelson. Well, you can go uh, no, my affairs any day. <laughs> you certainly may. Thank you. Why don't you guys take a flying leap on a rolling donut? <laughs> All right, now I hope you gentlemen have learned your lesson about stereotyping people. Just because a person has a great body doesn't mean they can't be just as dirty and vulgar as you. Hey, guys, come on. I'm going to buy you a drink. Hey, oh, all right. 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 Well, look who it is. My first lady. And I certainly hope not my last. <laughs> my mom is breaking myself up. Looks like you had quite a meeting, Gabe. Well, you know, boys will be boys. They get out of line sometimes, but basically they're no smarter than me. I know. Did I ever tell you about my great uncle Vinny? Yes, he did, Gabe. He was President Abraham Lincoln's personal tailor. You told me that already. Gabe. One morning, President Lincoln woke up in Gettysburg before a big speech. And he looked down, he saw a shirt collar, he was all frayed from, from rubbing against his beard. You told me this one, Gabe. So he says to my Uncle Vinny, he says, Vinny, you think you can fix this? And my Uncle Vinny said, well, certainly I can fix it. So he fixed it. And then after he fixed it, President Lincoln turns to my Uncle Vinny and says, Vinny, how much do I owe you? And my Uncle Vinny says, four, four score, score and 20, 20 simoleons. I know Gabe has told me a million times. What's the point? Oh, well, there's no point. There's never a point to any of my stories, but they're all hysterically funny. Yeah, you are really funny, Gabe. <laughs> Next Thursday at this time, join us for Tennessee Williams' moving classic, The Glass Menagerie. Here are some scenes from this ageless classic. So, Laura, your brother tells me you're very shy. I don't know. Well, isn't there something you take more interest in than anything else? Well, my glass collection takes up a good deal of time. Oh, tell me about it. They're little articles. Ornaments, mostly. Most of them are little animals made out of glass. The tiniest little animals in the world. Mother calls them a glass menagerie. It's one of my favorites. Oh, how nice. It's a unicorn, isn't it? Uh -huh. Oh, sorry, Laura. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm very clumsy, really. It's okay. Uh, now it just looks like all the other horses. You know something, Laura? I have the strangest feeling I've seen you someplace before. But the name I want to call you, it's not a name at all. It's. Blue roses. Blue roses, that's oh. it. I'm sorry, Laura. Oh. Blue roses, that was my nickname for you. We went to high school together. You know, Laura, you were very self-conscious even then. Where's that music coming from? 
Paradise Dance Hall across the street. Would you care to cut a rug, Miss Wingfield? Oh, no, I can't. Oh, come on. There's that inferiority <laughs> stuff again. Oh, no, I it's can't easy, dance, Laura. Really? Laura, no, it's just... easy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Laura. Isn't this great? Just, just loose it up. <laughs> Laura. Oh, my God. Laura. This is fun, huh? You should not be self-conscious at all. Laura, someone ought to build your confidence. You should be proud, not shy, Laura. Someone ought to kiss you. This is a country unlike any other country in the world. It's remarkably rich in its history and traditions. It was here in Armenia over a thousand years ago that a young man named Blesto Falugian invented this, the common rug. <laughs> now, Blesto spent the better part of his life trying to prove that this would be a, a worthwhile alternative to hardwood floors, but with virtually no success. He was to die a penniless, heartbroken man, but 100 years after he died, a young man named Aram Avakian was to prove Blesto correct. For he took Blesto's invention, and very simply by deducing that if this were to be enlarged, say to the size of a floor, it would revolutionize home decorating. And he was right. <laughs> this is the simple home of Mrs. Susian Tarpusian. As you can see, she leads the rather austere life of an Armenian peasant. Now, this home is like many humble peasant huts throughout the world, except in one respect. The rich textures of wall-to-wall -wall Broadway. Even the most meager of dwellings in this part of the country has luxurious carpeting. It was here, on the plains of Papuzian, that we find the first thing to be seen by Genghis Khan and his plundering hordes as they entered the country. The first welcome mat. I'm here at the famous Andrew Carnusian Memorial Library where we find the first book ever published, predating even Gutenberg's Bible. That book is the Armenian Rug Sample Book. <laughs> well, as you've seen, the indomitable ingenuity of this country has, has contributed to the cultures of the world, making our home a better place in which to live. As the old Armenian saying goes, when you are honest, when you are honest, you are honest like the grass. But when you lie, you lie like a rug. <laughs> Mom, Dad, you getting ready? That place looks pretty good. Let's just try and keep it this way, all right? Uh, Ma, you didn't do any dusting. I... Okay, let's see, we got cheese and crackers in there. That's fine. Oh, Dad, remember what I said, huh? No political jokes. She's something special, and I don't want you to... Okay, this must be her. Remember what I said, please. Just a minute. Eugenie! Walt! Hey, hey. You're early. Oh, I'm sorry. I wanted to make a good impression. I didn't want to be late. It's okay. Hey, don't worry about a thing. How'd your test go? I passed. No! I'm a full-fledged taxidermist oh, now. Oh, well, congratulations! <laughs> oh, it was a real tough exam. It was three and a half hours long. No, what'd you have to do? Yeah, one question. Stuff this moose. <laughs> it's out in the garage. You want to go see it? Oh, oh maybe later. Okay. <laughs> well, what do you think of the place? Ooh, there's a lot of animals here. Yeah, I know. This is most of my first year stuff. I got better stuff out in the garage. After we had married and move in here, you know, we can bring in the good stuff. <laughs> we'll be living here. Oh, with, for sure. With your parents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did you tell them? Oh, I, I got a confession to make, Eugenia. I didn't tell them. But I what? did it for a reason. I, I figured we'd tell them together, you know? We'd have dinner, a few drinks, get drunk, and then tell them. It's easier that way. My folks are a little weird, you know? Okay, whatever you think's best. It is, believe me. Okay. Hey, come on in, sit down. Oh, thanks. <sighs> this is it. Oh, it's lovely, Walt. Walt, do you think they'll like me? Like you? They're gonna love you. It's me they can't stand. <laughs> Look, I'll go get them, all right? Okay. Just relax, make yourself at home, okay? Okay. 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 Walt? Yeah. I love you. I love you, too. Walt? Yeah. <laughs> Walt! Mm. 
This is my dad. <laughs> this is my mom. Mom, Dad, this is Eugenie. Eugenie? Mom and Dad. Mom, Dad, we've got something we gotta tell you. Eugenie, why don't you tell him? Come on. Can I talk to you for a moment? Sure. Excuse us for a moment. What's the matter? I think I better go. Why? Well, I just think I need some fresh air. If I could just go outside. All you need is a little water on your face. You're just a little nervous, that's all. Why don't you just... go to the washroom? Okay. Just go to the washroom, splash some water on your face, all right? Yes. There's some Anison in there, too. You can take those. Well, what do you think? <laughs> what do you mean she's like all the rest? Now, look, I love her, all right? And I'm gonna marry her. We're all gonna live here happy, right? Get that through your heads. And now, what? Hi, how are you feeling? <laughs> Much better. Yeah? Great. Come on. That's it. Come on. There we go. There we go. Legs there. Now, let's have a party, huh? How about a few drinks? For you? Huh? Dad? How about a beer? Mom? Carrot juice? She's on a health food kick. Come on, have a drink. No, thank you, Chuck. Come on, I'll make you something. Though. I don't want one. I'll make you up one of my specialties. Now, I want you to talk and get to know each other, all right? Talk? Yeah, talk. Get to know each other. Walter. I said talk. <laughs> okay, I'll go get the drinks. Be right back. that, didn't I? <laughs> Here's your drink. <laughs> no, thanks, Walt. Come on, man. Just drink it. I said I didn't want to drink, so I don't want to drink it. No, you try it drink first. Drink it. I said drink it! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Always the clown, huh, Dad? <laughs> Police. You wait right there. Not one sound. You understand that? Just a minute. Yes, officer. Yeah, I'll be right out. Not one word. <laughs> yes, officer. <laughs> no problem here. A little misunderstanding, that's all. <laughs> Got a little joke. <laughs> You like to make a break? <laughs> what? Um, yeah, yeah, no problem. Uh, sure, go ahead for a drink. Yep. Here we go. <laughs> Officer Brannigan, I'd like you to meet my fiance, Eugenie. Eugenie, this is Officer Flanagan. You know my parents already. Uh, how about a drink?
songs have been since you felt really depressed. Now, Connie Franklin, one of the most depressing singers of your generation, will really bring you down with 20 of her most maudlin hits in a new album entitled 20 Depressing Hits by Connie Franklin. <laughs> Hi, I'm Connie Franklin. I'd like to share a few of my memories with you. If you let me in your heart, <laughs> please. <laughs> Mama. I'm losing my hearing. I've lost sight in one eye. Singers this miserable come along only once in a generation. And if you order now, you'll get free the lighter side of Connie Franklin. I'm Floyd Robertson. And I'm Earl Cannonbear. <coughs> this is the SCTV News. <coughs> Fighting erupted in Albania yesterday as left-wing factionless forces attacked Albanian revisionists in downtown tyranny. The fierce struggle lasted a full day as heavy machine gun, artillery, and mortar fire was exchanged. There were no casualties. <coughs> no? <coughs> On the local scene, Municipal Parks Commissioner Gerald Bing... <coughs> Announced today that all city parks will be closed uh, for the opening of physical <laughs> <coughs> fitness week. Uh, he gave no reason for his uh, decision. <coughs> Floyd. <coughs> no, no, it'll pass. <coughs> well, a heavy earthquake. Registering 9.6 on the Richter scale rocked the tiny country of Togoland again. <coughs> Yesterday, it was the 12th successive quake recorded in as many days. Togos are braced for a series of aftershocks. <coughs> Earl? <Thank> the downtown... <coughs> <That's the water. coughs> <coughs> like old man Winter is here to stay. <coughs> Meteorologists uh, have predicted that we've officially entered, we've officially entered the ice age as of yesterday. Therefore, the media... <coughs> we officially entered the ice age as of yesterday. Meteorologists predict that we should... we should move south in hordes. Earl. <laughs>